Hi everybody, so in this video we're going to look at proof by deduction and this involves starting with known facts and then using logical reasoning to derive a conclusion. And before we begin there's some notation that we need to know. This R symbol means the set of all real numbers and this can include fractions, decimals, irrationals and negatives. This Z symbol represents the set of integers or whole numbers. And when we have Z and then a plus, this represents the set of positive integers. And while zero is not negative, it's also not considered positive, so this does not include zero. And this symbol, which looks like an E, means it is a member of. So you could have five is a member of the set of positive integers. And this symbol means for all. So putting this together as an example, this would mean for all real values of n. And throughout these videos, I'm going to show you how to use these symbols to write the conclusion for our deductive reasoning proof. Okay, so if we start with our first example, We've been asked to prove that this expression is odd for all integer values of n. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to expand out this n plus 3 squared. So we've got n plus 3 multiplied by itself. And then we'll take away the n squared term. We'll expand out these brackets. So we get n squared plus 3n plus another 3n plus 9 minus this n squared term. You can see the n squareds will cancel. We can collect these n terms together to give us 6n and then plus for 9. But we know an odd number will always follow an even number. So we need to show that this is one after an even number. So if I rewrite this as 6n plus 8 plus 1, we still have our 9 term and our 6n. So then we can factor 2 out of the 6n plus 8. So we get two lots of n plus 4 plus for 1. Now we know that this term must be even because it's a multiple of 2. And when you add 1 to an even number, we know we get an odd. So for our conclusion, we say n plus 3 squared minus n squared is odd for all n values that are members of the set of integers, okay? Let's try another example. Okay, so in this example, we've been asked to prove that a squared plus 6a plus 12 is always greater than zero for all real values of a. So when we have a question like this, it's a good idea to visualize this as a graph. And when it's at this point, you can see it has two solutions that are equal to zero and solutions that are less than zero. And as we move it up, you can see we have solutions that are equal to zero. But what we want to prove is that it's always greater than zero. So we'll never be on or below the horizontal axis. And you can see that this is the minimum point of a curve. So we need to prove that this point cannot be on or below this axis. And when we're looking at the minimum point, it's always a good idea to use the method of completing the square. So if we have a squared plus 6a plus 12, this is exactly the same as a plus 3 we're half this value of 6 squared. We complete the square by taking away the 3 squared, 9. Then we add back on this 12. We can tidy this up. So we have a plus 3 squared plus 3. And now we know that a plus 3 squared must be greater than or equal to 0. Because if a was negative, when you square it, it would become positive. 
But let's say that a was equal to negative 3. You'll get negative 3, add 3 is 0. 0 squared would be 0. So this is why it's greater than or equal to 0. But then when you add this positive 3 to it, we know a plus 3 squared, which can on one instance be equal to 0. But when you add the 3, that must then always be greater than 0. If a lowest it could be is 0 and you're adding 3 to it, it must always be positive or greater than 0. So we say that therefore, a squared plus 6a plus 12 must be greater than 0 for all a values that are members of the set of real numbers. Okay, let's try an exam style question. Okay, so in this exam style question, we've been asked to prove that there is no real value of k such that this equation can have real roots. There's a couple of ways we could do this, but I'm going to look at using a method of completing the square. So we have x plus 2 squared. We'll take away a 4 to complete the square. We'll add in the 7 and the k squared, and this will be equal to 0. We can tidy up this left hand side. So we've got x plus 2 squared plus the 3 plus the k squared. And now what we can do is move the positive 3 and the k squared to the right hand side. So we get x plus 2 squared will equal negative 3 minus k squared. Then we can factor out the negative on this right hand side. So x plus 2 squared will be equal to negative 3 plus k squared. When you expand out this negative, you get the negative 3 and the negative k squared. If we look at the left hand side, the x plus 2 squared, we know this could be greater than or equal to 0. If x was equal to negative 2, we'll have 0 squared, which is 0. And any other value, squaring it would make it positive, so it will be greater than 0. If we look at the right hand side, we know the k squared must be greater than or equal to 0 for the same reason. And when you add 3 to this, so 3 plus k squared, this must always be greater than 0. Because if you add 3 to that 0, it must be greater than that. And then when you negative 3 plus k squared, this must therefore always be less than 0. So if our left hand side is greater than or equal to 0, and our right hand side is less than, there are no other real solutions left. So our conclusion then is that no real value of k for which this equation has real roots. Okay? Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. If you did find that helpful, please like and subscribe. And you can download the full lesson and worksheet from my website, mrmathematics.com.